I think you can see where I'm going with this. We all need a handheld unit, right? It's lightweight, good quality, protects our camera, produces good audio, and I think when you put all this together, it works really well. Let's see what I've got. I've got the Ulanza aluminum GoPro cage with the cold shoe USB input mount on top. Just good design, by the way. I've got the Kula Hada mini tripod holding it all together. And for audio, I'm using the Rode Go Wireless. This is not chest hair, in case you were wondering. Let's talk about the good sides, of which there are many, the downsides, of which there are few to none, and we're gonna walk through each part separately. So let's go to the macro view and see what we've got. Let's first take a walk through the Ulanza GoPro cage. Lanza is the Chinese word for basket. Uh, you can pronounce it however you like in English or whatever language you're speaking. Great product, uh, good design, lots of nice little features and uh, a lot of versatility and offers a lot of protection for your GoPro. Uh, this one fits the uh, GoPro 7, which is what I'm using in the video. And I'll walk you through the uh, steps to uh, set it up and see how it works. First thing to note upon setup is that it has a universal tripod mount on the bottom. And then it comes with an attachment for your GoPro mount and the Allen key for it is included if you don't have one. The backing plate simply snaps out of place and you can slide it out. And that allows you to insert your GoPro. Once you have the camera in, you just slide the backing plate back into position and it snaps shut. Now you're ready to Put the cold shoe adapter on top. It snaps into place much like the backing plate. And on this version, Ulanza put the cold shoe mount on top, whereas the previous version, it was below the frame. And some were complaining that the fuzzy windscreen thing would show up in the frame of your GoPro. Uh, so putting it on top allows for enough clearance. And thoughtfully, they made the USB-C holder on the side also a very sturdy piece of aluminum, which really holds it quite securely. All told, uh, this frame uh, really couldn't be better. It's very well thought out, very well designed, and provides a lot of protection for your GoPro. And it's quite lightweight. We're almost ready to hit the road, so we're going to look next at the Rode Go Wireless. Out of the box, you will have two units, the transmitter and the receiver. You can see there are two USB charging cables included in the package. There's two dead cat windscreens, too small for a cat, maybe a dribble or a Furby. Nice to have two, a 1 8 inch audio adapter cable, and a handy dandy pouch. It is handy and dandy. Basic instructions to set it up. Turn one on, you turn the other one on. And you get the exhilarating satisfaction of peeling back the plastic. It's got that new transmitter smell. USB charging port on the side, power button in the white, on the front and a clip on the back that which is also the cold shoe mount so use the clip to clip the uh, receiver onto the upper cold shoe mount and then insert the 1 8 inch adapter audio cable Okay, the next thing to do is to activate the all spark and bring the unit to life by hitting the power button. And accordingly, you hold down the power button on the transmitter and you'll notice they connect pretty well immediately. And there are two blue lights, one indicating that it is connected and the other indicating that it is on. 
And now you can do an audio check. The display shows the battery life of the transmitter and the receiver, which is nice to know. It shows the input signal strength, and it also shows the wireless signal strength. All right, let's go outside and uh, listen to the audio quality of the Rode wireless unit. Let's talk Rode Go Wireless. You can't beat this system for compactness and just sheer genius of design. So portable, so lightweight, perfect for on-the-spot shooting. What we want to do is see uh, what kind of ambient and narration headroom we're getting. There's cars passing by in a park. There's people chatting. We just want to hear what kind of difference we're going to get there. Overall, though, so far with all of my tests, I think this system sounds amazing. All right, let's do a distance check. Walking along the path, crossing the gravel path, going past the blue bin, walking through the shade, noticing that somebody left the jacket here, I'm not sure how that happens, seeing the tree, going up to the other bench, still talking, still talking, over there, another blue bin, because we left the recycle in Toronto, past the lamppost, and up through the camera, here I am, I wonder how that's working. Circle around, go back past the lamppost, over past the second blue bin, which is now the first blue bin, past the fountain again, give it a little tap, past the bench, passing the tree, noticing that somebody still hasn't picked up their jacket, I'm not sure how somebody leaves their jacket in the park, past the blue box again, crossing the path, assuming there's some audio still, but not really sure. Thanks, Jen, for watching the camera. And we made it. I want you to have this video for free, but if you've got two or three bucks lying around and you can kick them over here, it helps me take time from my real job and do more of this. So find the link below, go to PayPal, Select only the least of what you can afford, and just know that I'd really appreciate it. Last but not least in our setup is our mini tripod by Kula Halda. Uh, things you can say in Chinese that you can't say in English. Uh, this company is also from Shenzhen. And I really like this tripod. It's a very good quality, really sturdy for a mini tripod with lots of versatility. So I'm going to walk you through this. And uh, we're going to test it out and see how it all works. So straight out of the package, you'll notice it comes with the uh, Allen keys, which you might need. Most people have their own, but it's nice that they sent them. It's very Ikea of them. Made of carbon fiber legs with anodized aluminum chassis and other points. I was first attracted to this tripod for a couple of things. One was the uh, rather robust uh, looking pivot on top and the positioning and number of water levels. Uh, on some of the other mini ones I was looking at, the water levels were sometimes hidden and these were well positioned and seemed to be very thoughtful. And it turns out after using it, uh, that works out to be a very nice uh, feature of this tripod. It also comes with a quick release, which is pretty standard these days, but it's nice to know you have it. Naturally, you get a full range of motion from the ball joint on top. But the nice thing is you don't really need to reef down on that threaded um, bit to hold it. The engineering seems to be quite precise and it clamps quite easily and holds very securely. Let's look at the water levels. One is positioned in the thumb screw for the quick release. And the other is located uh, underneath the quick release. And there's a third one located at the top of the leg, which is probably the one you would use the most. Tripod head swivels by loosening the thumb screw, and it has a degree rating scale printed in the red below. Let's look at the range of motion on the legs. The ratchet allows you to go from near upright to 90 degrees horizontal. You simply push on the clip to release the ratchet and to go up and increase the angle and simply swivel the leg down to decrease the angle. Struggling with leg extensions is something that photographers and videographers and I guess uh, yoga practitioners uh, struggle with a lot uh, but in this case uh, it makes it easy. It's a well-engineered mechanism. It really doesn't require much effort to loosen and tighten these and they clamp down and hold into place very securely and they come with rubber grips uh, very well done and very well designed. And rubber stoppers on the bottom, as usual. The leg shafts are also made of carbon fiber, which lends a lot to the lightness of this tripod. At its lowest position, it's about 5 centimeters off the ground, and its overall height is about 15 centimeters.
Let's go back to those Allen keys for a second. You can tighten the swivel points on the legs. You can also tighten and loosen the quick release mount. And there is one, of course, for securing the quick release to your camera. And the smallest one for adjusting the screws on the quick release itself. A Phillips screwdriver is not included with the tripod, but it does adjust the threaded uh, thumb screw on the ball joint. And there is a flathead screw that um, holds the head to the leg mechanism that you can remove. Now this tripod also comes included with an extension bar, which you'll notice has a grip and you can use it as a vlogging handle for your GoPro. Or you can use it to, of course, to extend the height of your tripod. And it has a standard a tripod mount in the bottom and a thumb screw release to extend the length of it. To install the extension arm, you're going to perform some surgery and remove the head from the tripod. And that will expose a two-piece adapter for uh, both sizes of standard tripod threaded screws. And you flip it over and thread it back in. This is where the flathead screwdriver might come in handy, but you can just hold it with your finger and it uh, tightens securely. And then, of course, reattach the head onto the end of the extension arm. All right, so that's the 411 on the details of this uh, bad boy. Let's take it outside and see it in action. I think this setup strikes a golden mean between the five main considerations of going out and about to shoot. Portability, versatility, lightweightness, protection for your gear, and sound quality. I really dig how this setup uh, just allows you to quickly adapt to a scene and take a shot without doing a lot of adjustments. And you can collapse the legs and it just uh, throw it in a bag if you need to. Well, don't throw it. Probably be a little more careful. And then you have the tripod options where you can get a full range of perspectives. And at its full extension, it's almost a full tripod height. A couple of downsides. Holding this in a vlogging scenario for long periods of time might make your arm tired. And at its full extension, the tripod's pretty top heavy, so you have to be careful. I'd be a little nervous about putting a DSLR on top of that, but if you're careful, you can do it. I'm pretty stoked about how this whole thing came together. I'm looking forward to having some fun with this uh, at family gatherings, taking trips, shooting video for my YouTube channels, anything like that. Thanks for tuning in. If you've got any comments or questions, please shoot me a message in the comments below and subscribe to my channel, please, to help me out. I'd appreciate it. And this is the Municipal Man of Mystery signing off. We'll see you all next time.